Good evening and welcome to the 11th annual Skoll World Forum on Social Entrepreneurship. <laughs> Look around you, you are amongst family, and it's a growing family. A thousand of us here today from six continents. A far smaller number have attended all 11 of our gatherings. Uh, I'd like those 11 to stand and be recognized. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. This is one of my favorite weeks of the year. Uh, I always arrive here exhausted from the pace of the spring and leave here exhilarated from sharing time with you and celebrating your stories. In fact, celebrating is a big part of what we do. Our mission at the foundation is to drive large-scale change by investing in, connecting, and celebrating social entrepreneurs and the innovators who help them solve the world's most pressing problems. This evening, I'm going to talk about storytelling. Storytelling is in our DNA uh, as human beings. It's embedded in all of us from the time we sat around campfires and swapped tales. I've always believed that a story well told can make a difference. Stories can spotlight problems, they can identify solutions, and they can lead us to action. Since 2005, the Skoll Foundation has invested in storytelling through a number of media partnerships, including with filmmakers at the Sundance Institute. Each year, Sundance and the Foundation bring together a group of filmmakers and social entrepreneurs at the Sundance Film Festival. Now, some might think that the left-brained, business-savvy social entrepreneurs and the right-brained filmmakers who think of themselves as artists would live in different worlds. But we've learned they have a lot in common. They are creative and imaginative. They're problem solvers. They share a desire to reach people and to have an impact. We found time and time again that together they're more powerful than either could be acting alone. Here's a good example. A couple of years ago, Partners in Health joined with Sundance filmmakers Keith Davidson and Corey Stern to make a short documentary called Open Heart. It's the story of six, uh, of eight sick Rwandan children who left their families behind and embarked on a life or death journey into the Sudan. There, they hoped to get open heart surgery in Africa's only free of charge, state of the art cardiac hospital. Let's take a look at a scene from Open Heart. Rheumatic heart disease starts primarily by strep throat. There are 18 million people already affected by the disease in Africa. 300,000 a year, they die. We have been drained out of money. Do you know what kind of disease is? Disease of poor people. Yeah. Is your heart access? Good. I don't know about you, but every time I see these scenes, uh, it, it moves me. Um, when they began working together, neither partners in health nor the filmmakers could have known that the film would be nominated for a 2013 Academy Award. Nor could they have guessed that the um, uh, Rwanda's Minister of Health would see the film and become so inspired that she would make the eradication of rheumatic heart disease in children a priority for her country. Now, Partners in Health, with help from the Skoll Foundation, 
is working with the Rwandan government to support the rollout of the Health Ministry's plan. That's the power of storytelling. Our partners, yes. <laughs> Our partnership with Sundance also brought us a beautiful short film by Jahan Nujem and Mona Eldaif called Rafea Solar Mama. It reached over 500 million homes around the world and featured school entrepreneur Bunker Roy. Uh, Bunker, it's always great to have you here with us. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I've, I've known Jahan for many years, and recently she directed an epic documentary about the Egyptian revolution called The Square. It's a powerful film about the yearning for freedom, and this year was also nominated for an Academy Award. My company, Participant Media, has been a part of this film, and as a special treat, uh, we'll be having a screening here in New Theatre on Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Uh, it's also on Netflix if you don't get a chance to see it tomorrow night. <laughs> Participant media is my own social enterprise. It really began as a childhood dream. As a kid, I used to read a lot, and I worried that the world of the future might be a pretty terrifying place overpopulation, terrible new weapons, new wars, diseases, and conflicts over essential things like water, forests, and fuel. I wanted to be a writer to tell stories to engage everyone in the big issues that would affect us all. Now, some of you may have seen other parts of the world when you were young, uh, but I'd never even been on a plane until I was 20. And at that point, I got a one-way ticket to London and a backpack, and I went around the world for a year. Uh, and it really opened my eyes. Uh, amongst other places, I visited Afghanistan, the Sudan, and India. But it was Pakistan that really made an impression on me. Here I met people living in abject poverty, uh, but also without the hope that they could change their lives and change their own stories. And I now had human faces to put to the tales that I so desperately wanted to share. So after a small stint at eBay, making a buck or two, <laughs> I, tur I, turned my back, I turned back to my storytelling dreams. Uh, I moved to Los Angeles in 2004 to start my own company. It's the only media company of only scale uh, of any scale in the world uh, whose goal is to highlight issues uh, in the world and inspire people to take action. In 10 years, we've produced over 50 films, including Lincoln, The Help, An Inconvenient Truth, The Cove, Food, Inc., The Kite Runner, Charlie Wilson's War, and a long, long list of others. We even have a TV channel called Pivot that we launched last year in the US in 45 million homes aimed at young people who not only want good entertainment, but to have the opportunity to participate and create positive social change as well. Like many of you, I received a lot of raised eyebrows when I began this journey. Uh, I heard many encouraging things like, if you want to send a message, use Western Union. Or the surest way to become a millionaire is to start by being a billionaire and go into the movie business. <laughs> and then there was my personal favorite. The streets of Hollywood are littered with the carcasses of people like you who think you're going to come to this town and make movies. Um, and by the way, I heard that phrase repeated time and time again, word for word, and I could have sworn it must have been written in the town hall or something. But as I was doing diligence for the company, I asked all these movie people the same question. What are you proudest of in your career? And whether it was an actor, writer, agent, lawyer, banker, everyone responded 
by talking about a film that dealt with an issue they cared passionately about, ranging from AIDS to foster care to the rainforest. Then when I asked, what if there was a company that did more films about the issues that you care about, would you be supportive? The answer was, without exception, yes. And that gave me the encouragement I needed to start the company. I could see that people in the movie business, like people everywhere, and certainly like all of us, yearn to do work that has meaning, that improves the world in some way. Since then, we've won many awards and plaudits for our work, and I'm the last one to say that uh, winning Oscars is a heavy burden. <laughs> but I'm most proud that our films have made an impact in climate change, women's rights, education, the prison system, dolphin hunting, and many, many more. We team up with NGOs and social entrepreneurs who are experts in these fields and create campaigns to encourage people to take action. Here's a short clip that illustrates some of the films we've done. This instrument can teach, it can illuminate, and yes, it can even inspire. But it can do so only to the extent that humans are determined to use it towards those ends. Good night, and good luck. It is our time to rise again to secure our future. Our greatest asset will be our ability as a human race to reach within ourselves, to find the courage to move toward peace. I want to create a parliament. This guy might be able to revolutionize not just his country, but the whole region. The real democracy rising up organically. You can't win. Whether you win or lose, you stand up. We always go in with our ideals and we change the world. But that ball, though, it keeps on bouncing. Someone has taken an interest in you and someone loves you, and they recognize the importance of education. People have got to start demanding good, wholesome food of us, and we'll deliver. This vaccine is a result of the courage and perseverance of a remarkable few. You want to do something that'll make people change. So you said to write about what disturbs me, particularly if it bothers no one else. I'd like to write something from the point of view of the health. There is no way I'm going to let either side dictate our fates. No mas, no mas pinocho. Hunger is right here in the United States. It could be right next door, and you would never know because people are too afraid to talk about it. It's going to be extraordinary. It's one of the great revolutions of mankind. They know what they want, and they're not leaving until they get it. We're stepped out upon the world stage now with the fate of human dignity in our hands. Blood's been spilled to afford us this moment. Now, now, now. Once social change begins, it can't be reversed. We can't oppress someone who's not afraid anymore. We've seen the future, and the future's ours. Thank you. Um, our movie about Cesar Chavez uh, opened two weeks ago, and the reaction has been fantastic, but I can't wait to hear what you think about it. Uh, but more on that in a bit. The theme of this week's forum is ambition. So I must tell you that we have big ambitions for participants. We want to make local language films and television shows all around the world. We, uh, in Latin America, where we've already begun. Um, yay. <laughs> uh, in China, in India, in Russia, 
Uh, we want to grow on television and online so that we can touch more people. Our goal, nothing less than to be the world's most important media company. So I say that with humility, but in this crowd, <laughs> I'm inspired to think big, in large part by all of you, by your stories, by your creativity, by your goodness, and in particular by your chutzpah, by your fierce determination to let nothing stand in your way. I'm, I'm thinking this week in particular uh, about those of you who fight on behalf of girls who want to go to school. We know there are no silver bullets that will eradicate poverty, but girls' education comes pretty close. It shouldn't be controversial. Unfortunately, in too many parts of the world, it is. No one should have to take huge risks to advocate on behalf of girls, yet many of you do. I'm, I'm inspired by Sakina Yakubi, who returned to Afghanistan in the 1990s, to, uh, determined to deliver education and health care to girls there, despite opposition from the Taliban. I'm motivated by Karatulin Bakhtiri of IDSP, who has established 2,000 primary uh, girls' schools in Pakistan in the face of a violent insurgency there. Tomorrow night, I have the great honor of presenting the Skoll Global Treasure Award to a young woman who inspired us all to care about the issue of girls' education as never before. I'm talking, of course, about Malala. We'll have more to say about her tomorrow, but since our theme tonight has been storytelling, I'm proud to announce that Participant Media is producing a feature-length documentary about Malala in partnership with Image Nation. Uh, I'm excited to think about all the good that that movie is going to do. And yes, every spring here in Oxford, I get excited when I think about all the good the people in this room have done but more importantly, by what you are going to do in the years ahead. I'm humbled to be here amongst you. I'm honored to support you. I'm proud to call many of you my friends. You deserve to be celebrated and to have your stories told. So, that, that brings me back to Cesar Chavez, the hero who organized farm workers in the United States in the 60s and 70s. His birthday is a holiday in several states where people are encouraged uh, to spend the day doing community service. We're working to make this a national holiday to inspire everyone in America to do their part to improve their community and make a difference in the world. When Cesar Chavez finished his rallies, he would lead everyone with the chant, Si, se puede, Spanish for yes we can. And since these words apply to all of you, and in the spirit of the School World Forum and this year's theme of ambition, I'd like to finish my remarks in honor of Cesar Chavez and have you all join with me by standing up and chanting, Si se puede, as loud as you can. Ready? On the count of three. Here we go. Stand up. Ready? One, two, three. Si se puede. Si se puede, si se puede, si se puede. Thank you very much. Let's have a wonderful week together.